Hi guys, today's video is on the topic malignant otitis eczema. The term malignant otitis eczema is a misnomer. It is neither a malignancy nor is it an inflammation which is restricted to the external canal. Malignant otitis eczema is a complication of otitis eczema in the immunocompromise where the infection spreads beyond the external canal to involve the periosteum of bones or skull base and finally result in skull base osteomyelitis. Hence the term skull base osteomyelitis has been used to replace the term malignant otitis eczema though skull base osteomyelitis can occur due to other causes as well. The Levenson's criteria has been used to diagnose malignant otitis eczema. It includes patients who are diabetic or immunocompromised due to causes like HIV, chemotherapy or renal transplant and they will have refractory otitis eczema with pain that is worse at night. There will be nocturnal otalgia which may even prevent you from sleeping. Purulent otorrhea will be present on examination and granulation tissue may be seen at the bony cartilaginous junction which may even be absent in uh, patients having HIV on pus culture pseudomonas aeruginosa has to be present according to the criteria but the staphylococcus aureus, staphylococcus epidermidis, proteus, klebsiella and even fungi such as aspergillus niger, aspergillus flavus has been obtained in pus culture. Usually there is history of a trivial trauma to the extent layer with earbuds just as in otitis externa but Typical features of otitis eczema like tragal sign may be absent. But why does it occur in the diabetic? It is due to the microangiopathy which is seen in diabetics along with the high pH of cerumen which results in the pseudomonas aeruginosa invading and causing necrotizing vasculitis. So, this is what is resulting in malignant otitis externa in the diabetic and in the immunocompromise reduced chemotaxis and reduced humoral immunity also contributes. This can result in cellulitis of EAC initially and then it involves the cartilage to cause chondritis and then there will be osteitis followed by skull based osteomyelitis which spreads into the various skull based foramina. Initially it goes via the fissures of Sandorini to involve the facial nerve foramina that is the stylomastoid foramina to cause the facial palsy and then it goes into the jugular foramen to result in 9 10 11 cranial palsy to result in subsequent dysphagia. There might be pain on chewing and on opening the mouth because of the involvement of temporomandibular joint and masseter myositis. HRCT temporal bone is the most commonly done investigation though its utility is restricted to cases where there is more than 30 percent bone demineralization. Technician 99 scan is the investigation of choice because it is a very sensitive investigation due to its ability to accumulate in areas of high osteoblastic activity but its specificity is very low and it can be positive in malignancies. So, it is important that you do a tissue biopsy to rule out malignancy. Gallium 67 scan has been utilized to monitor treatment response since it accumulates in areas of active inflammation and normalizes with disease resolution. So, for diagnosis purpose you have the technetium 99 scan and for prognosis the gallium 67 scan. ESR and CRP may also be done to look for the prognosis of the patient because it also comes down with disease resolution. Long term culture directed antimicrobial therapy for 6 to 8 weeks is preferred and fluoroquinolones were the preferred first line treatment because of its good oral bioavailability and ability to penetrate bone. But nowadays it is being replaced by injection ceftacidim along with norfloxacin combination because of the increased resistance to ciprofloxacin and so 
Suprafloxacin is given only at the time of discharge at a dose of 750 mg PD which is a higher dose. Sometimes injection piprasilin tazobactam is also given and if it is a fungal MOE amphotericin B is given and at discharge itraconosol is given along with that adequate diabetic control and oral toileting with removal of granulation tissue is very important. So, with the take home message that something as trivial as a trauma to external canal can result in something as dangerous as malignant otitis externa, I would like to conclude my words. I will be coming with another important topic. Until then, goodbye.